Hello and welcome to Two Robbies Podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I am Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and today we break down the Champions League semi-finals and some key Premier League results. Here are the topics. Manchester City come back to draw with Real Madrid 1-1. Inter Milan score early to set the pace in the opening leg of the Milan derby, winning 2-0. And we look back to Monday and some key results in the relegation battle in the Premier League. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. All right, my friend, should we just get cracking? Get cracking let's, with um, let's get to it. Yeah. the Champions League and, of course, mm. semi-final. Great, great stage of the competition. Um, yeah. Final four, obviously. And much anticipated Real Madrid were hosting Manchester City. First of two mm. legs, of course. Um, Vinicius Junior uh, scores in the 36th minute and Kevin De Bruyne in the 67th to make it 1-1. Um, fascinating game, Rob. Um, yeah, I, I'll let you. I'll let you start on what your your kind well, of thoughts well, were. actually, uh, uh, just a bit of a a bit of a weird point, really, in terms of if you think of both the goals, Rob, they were nearly scored from virtually the same position on the pitch. Vinicius with a strike that bends away from Edison, yeah. um, Kevin De Bruyne with a beautiful kind of uh, had a couple of great shots of you know him cleanly hitting mm. through a ball and and it flying past Courtois. So mm. in terms of, of the game, they were the two spots one uh, for Madrid in the first half, City in the second half. Um, fascinating game, Rob. Two of the best club teams in Europe, arguably two of the best club teams in in world football. Uh, was really interesting how the game started. Manchester City's dominance and possession. But aligned to that, Rob, was the Madrid's kind of comfortable position not having the ball. And it really it struck home to me a little bit. I think a few weeks ago you were talking about Man United at times. Sometimes when they don't have possession, they've got to learn how to, to, to be a better team. Madrid have almost got that nailed down, mate. You know, I think it was 28% possession at, at one stage in the first 30-odd minutes of the game. Yet... There was no panic. It was almost like there's a patience, there's an understanding there of what they're going to do and how they're going to do things and how the game might change. So they get a good structure, they sit reasonably deep, they defend well. Um, and the other thing that, that came out of, of the early stages of the game, Rob, was, in some respects, the physicality of Madrid. Mm. Um, defenders right. particularly um, yeah. were, yeah, yeah, were yeah. really, really aggressive. Yeah. And and I, in, in all honesty, I thought it, slightly caught Manchester City off guard. I thought Haaland was, and I wouldn't say spooked is quite the right phrase, but I remember writing something on social media and saying, Rudiger's got to him a little bit. He's ruffled him. You know, Rudiger's a warrior. He's a man. He's, he, you know, and, and we have, we sometimes forget Haaland's a 22-year-old young man in the game, still probably learning, developing, growing. Mm. Um, so I thought that was in your um Cavallal at, at, at fullback was flying into challenges. Oh. Uh, Camavinga on the other side of the pitch, midfield players. Tony Cruz was, was getting involved. I, I, it was. It surprised me. I've never really seen Madrid with that edge, Rob, in a game. I, I think it also was a, was a sign of respect and understanding of what Manchester City can do if you allow them to play the football. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, mate. And the physicality was surprising. I mean, aggressive. I can't mm. say the referee... I mean, I, I, to be fair for both teams, the referee was, I mean, some of the fouls that he didn't give, like, was, uh, it was he got knocked in the head. I think it was... Uh, uh, Gundogan with Rudiger. Yeah. like he Caught him again, didn't he? Yeah. Pep, just, Pep wasn't really, happy with that, was he? Because I think, remember Pep in the final against Ch Chelsea last last season when De Bruyne got hit in the cheek by Rudiger, ended up with, with the facial problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it re really aggressive. So I thought the referee was a bit was a bit of a loose cannon, to be fair. Um, but both sides, to be fair, I think um, obviously for the goal, Ancelotti, you know, saying that the ball went out of play or whatever. Um, but no. But back onto the game. Fascinating. Two different mm. styles, Rob. Yeah. Man City, as we know, and everybody knows the way that that Pep plays with his teams. Really good on the ball. Really, mm. I thought it was a it was a solid. Man City performance, Rob. There was no mistakes, no, no, er uh, no errors. Nobody was, I think, particularly outstanding for Manchester mm. City on the day. Everybody was like a seven and a half out of ten. I thought all did their jobs, neat and mm. tidy, lovely playing out of. Um, uh, there wasn't that many presses coming from Real Madrid, no, no. given the age of some of the players, and given the you know the midfield of, of Cruz of thirty three, Mo uh, Modric is thirty seven. 
Benzema 35 as well, by the way. Yeah. So they were never never going to be a high pressing team. So that makes sense. But City's football is really, really good. But there's two sides to this. And um, possession isn't everything. Mm. And like you, Rob, recognizing um, Real Madrid's aggressiveness, I just I looked at the um, same thing, like defensively, how strong they were. Mm. Defensively, how strong they were, Robin, in 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 areas where I know that City faced that. No, no. they they often face aggressive tactics in the Premier League. But I thought this day. I mean, Cavalier is he, he, he's a player I'd love to play against, Rob, because he's a nasty Cavalier, <laughs> the, the fullback. He's yeah. nasty. He's really got a nasty edge. He shoves. He gets a chance to shoulder mm-hmm. barge Grealish into the into the advertising yeah, balls, which he does yeah. aggressively. He's just a nasty player. I'd love to flip in. I just love to play against him because I'd nick, we'd go back and forth. I just that'd be fun. That'd be a fun. But he, so he winds me up a little bit when I watch him play because he's so aggressive. <laughs> but he's effective. He's yeah, really effective. He, he kept yeah. Jack Grealish really really quiet. Mm. And and of course Antonio Rudiger, he's he's one of the best out there. He's one of the best out there. Chelsea should have never let this happen. Where he leaves the football club, he's one yeah. of the best defenders out there. And you saw it early on, Rob. Where I think you said that, that he spooked Ireland. Where he's mm. he's he's, he's, he he's grabbed him in the air. Yeah, he yeah, loves the confrontation. He yeah. wants to because he's quick and he's strong and he's big and he's tall. Mm. Um, I just thought Real Madrid was so good. Yeah. defensively. And even City's football, again, n- nothing was outstanding mm. until the Kevin De Bruyne strike. But every kind of, their usual football just didn't get them in, Rob. They just didn't, no. they couldn't no. get past that back four, particularly. Mm. We know they've got a brilliant goalkeeper as well in, um, in Courtois. Courtois. yeah. But it was the, um, it was the defensive strength. And like you said, they're okay with City having the ball, but mm. City didn't really hurt them, Rob. They found no. it really difficult to penetrate, which, um, is out of respect of how good Real Madrid were without the ball. Yeah. And the thing with Madrid, Rob, you get the sense, in, and um, Angelotti talked about it, that you know they'll wait for their moments. They'll wait. Yeah. I mean, they play through the press. You know, Modric comes and flicks the ball to mm. Camavinga, who flies in, and they get the goal courtesy of that. You know, the one time Vinicius dips inside, comes yeah. away from Carl Walker, and they get the goal. And it's almost like Angelotti's sort of got into the heads to say, we defend well, we don't give goals away. Yeah. And at the top end of the pitch, I've got yeah. Rodrigo and Vinicius Pace. I've got Benzema, who's an ace goal scorer, finding spaces and, and that. And it was interesting, Rob, because, the you know, you go into that game with uh, Benzema and Haaland, you know, one coming towards maybe the end of his career, one at the start, and you're thinking two of the best forwards in world football yeah. at, at this stage. But it wasn't their days, was it? It wasn't a day for either of them, really didn't get great service, wide players on either side, didn't really open up defenders as we might have have thought they would. You know, fair play to Carl Walker. And I thought um, Bernardo Silva did a good job down that side, Rob. Gave him a bit of a shield and helped out if Camavinga came forward. Um, You know, they didn't allow crossfield balls where you can get exposed against Vinicius getting one-on-one. So in some respects, it it was a bit of a kind of mutual admiration of respect for both these teams that, both can be better in attack. Mm. Both defended reasonably well with no things. And, 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 and I wrote, it was one of those days where wasn't a lot of particular goal-scoring chances. I'd, obvi- there was no obvious man of the match. There was no mm. subs used till 81 minutes. Pep used no subs again, which is very telling in Pep, where mm. he's just happy with what he's got, doesn't want to make mm. any changes. And it's kind of still up for grabs, Rob. We, mm. It, it, mm. It, it, it's... It's a game on, and it's an interesting game in terms of what Madrid did, how City had possession, what might be different in the in the in the second leg. But home advantage obviously gives City the slight edge, but I'm talking very slight, my friend. I think very slight. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, my my, you know, I'm sort of noted here. Like game two, I mean, it's going to be very similar. Yeah. Like, why why would it be any different? Why would it be any different? I mean, it it, it felt like a little bit. Because I guess with the, the flow of the game that City mm. were at home because they had the possession, et cetera, et cetera. But Real Madrid were okay with that. They'll do exactly the same at the Etihad. Etihad of yeah. course, the City fans will be loud and they'll be. Mm. But, but it's not as though that Man City's football requires a, an atmosphere. The, the, to, the, yeah, the, the crowd to, to, to play. drive the yeah. energy. They're not yeah. really about that. They're about no, football. No. Um, I just thought it was two brilliant teams, Rob, mm. that, that play the game at the moment in this matchup very differently. And yeah. that's the beauty of our, our sport, that you mm. can do it in two totally different ways. And yet they're brilliant at both of it. With a man, with a, with a, with a counter attacking team, you want to be strong, strong, strong defensively because yeah. you're going to yeah. need to be because yeah. you're going to be near your goal defending. But then, of course, you want to be quick and ruthless mm. on the counter attack, which, which Vinicius Jr. and 
a couple of others, Rodrigo and Valverde yeah. from midfield and Benzema. Oh. The, you know, the, against City's football is so different, yet they're yeah. so blimmin' even in, in regards of a, of a game. I think leg two is going to be very similar. Yeah. In some ways, I don't want to make... <laughs> Maybe Spurs fans will be happy with it. I'm making fun, but Spurs. What Madrid do is almost what Spurs want to do, isn't it? You know, sit deep, defend well, yeah, and have three it. players at the top of the pitch to hit you on yeah. on great counter track and score goals. That that's yeah. the, the blueprint that Conte's really try, tried to lay down at Spurs, and, and they haven't been good enough to do it. I think I think that the difference, the the balance that that you get with Madrid, Rob, is. They're still, you know, it's it's still a very good team, very technical team, but people are still prepared to do do the graft. I thought the midfield players, you know, and you talked about their ages, still prepared to do their their, their stuff in, in midfield, Rob, and, and blocking off and you know, making sure there was the, there's no runners going in. And they still do all that all that stuff. That's important that you have to do if you're gonna be successful. Um and, and maybe like they don't get enough credit for that at times, Madrid. Mm -hmm. Let's just let's just quickly go through some individuals, Rob. I think, I think there's some individual stuff that's pretty interesting to me. I thought I, I totally agree about in terms of picking a man of the match. I thought John Stones was particularly good. I mm -hmm. thought he was particularly good. Again, he did the midfield role. And when Walker plays, we've seen that Pep has the choice of not doing that. Doesn't yeah, always do he that. Dropped it was him a game. In now and then, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I think the game against Arsenal, he didn't mm -hmm. do that so much. It was Walker. But um, I thought Stones was really, really good. Um, and and I just. I just wanted to ask you, Rob, about Erling Haaland. Yeah. Um, is it okay, I guess, with the accolades, Rob, and, and the reputation he's built already? Yeah. He's only 22. Mm. Would some out there, and I'm not saying that I'm one of those, but I want to ask you the question, would some out there think, couldn't he have a bit more influence in this game? No, number, I mean, City had a ton of the ball. Yeah. Yes, City, we just said that Real Madrid were really well organised mm. and really strong defensively. It, I guess in a future edition of, of Erlen Haaland, will he, will he find a way, even in tough games like that, to be more influential, Rob, to get involved more, to be more of a threat to, I don't know, I just... Possibly. Sort of um, game, you know? Maybe a little harsh. I, I think I, I understand what you're saying. And at 22 years of age, we've talked about there is more development in his game. Maybe his, his timing of his runs, his position of, of defenders. I think he was hampered and hamstrung in some respect that wide players weren't really. It wasn't a, a Bernardo Silva and Jack Greenish state where they're going past people that easily crossing. And, and crossing and firing those balls through. I thought they, they looked for him once or twice on, on an early ball. De Bruyne looked for him a couple of times, never really connected. Um, so, yeah, I, I hear your point, and, and I would suggest there is a bit more development, and we, we talked about this, you know, about him being the finished article, and at 22 years of age, he's probably another two or three more years um, of coming. And I, and I also think maybe we should hold our judgment to the second game, Rob. Yeah. yeah. But let's have a look what happens in the second game. Yeah. Do, you know, is, do they, you know, does Rudiger body him up again and do they stop his runs in behind again and does he, that physicality affect him or do we see a slightly different Haaland who, mm. who wants to get involved so yeah it's, it's an interesting point and, and we should look at him because we, we, we have given him a load of praise and the goals speak for themselves but to develop as an even bigger and better footballer I mean you look at Kareem Benzema who's got very few of the actual natural uh, attributes that Haaland's got but he's such a clever mover in around yeah. that, that yeah. penalty box, Rob. And yeah. that's maybe yeah. somewhere where Haaland could pick up a little bit of that of, 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 of that guile and that that sort of nuance that, that gets you around penalty box that, that works in another way when the speed and the power and and, and, and that is isn't maybe working. Just just a final couple of thoughts from me, Rob. Um just again on individuals. I thought I thought actually De Bruyne. Struggled a little bit. Struggled yeah, for his, his great usual. day, was it? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got yeah. superb mm. and he's capable of doing that. Yeah. I suppose, it's, I think I read a headline somewhere, if Haaland doesn't get you, Kevin De Bruyne does. So, brilliant, brilliant goal. Yeah. But again, his his influence was, wasn't was quite what we might expect. But, I mean, I, this is super, super high level. Um, just going into the second leg, I'm just thinking about the second leg, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. The, the, and I've sort of said it's going to, I feel it's going to be very, very similar. Mm. Real Madrid can... can, can can change that if Real yeah. Madrid have and they will we saw the last 10 minutes 15 minutes of the game Rob Real Madrid had a bit of a flurry they had more of a go yeah if if Real Madrid decide to do that at any point then yeah. we, we could have a right game we could have a, like an end-to-end -end crazy yeah 
but Rem, I don't really want to do that. Um, but but so, but I just think there's a potential. There's a potential. It's, it's, for this it's interesting. You, it's interesting you say that though, because I, I read a line from Pep after the game, and it was one of those where probably both teams are happy enough with a one-one draw it, it go, going it. into the second game. But he did say something, Pep. He said he, he he stressed to his players the importance of keeping the ball and not making it go end to end and go yeah. crazy because yeah. he said if it goes crazy they, they do be, they do better crazy than we do which i thought was really interesting so he doesn't really want a, a basketball style does he no. he wants control and possession and them to to work their chances but if it becomes too open with vinicius and rodrigo and, and obviously benzema mm. you know top top class operators that's mm. where the worry might come and i suppose we, we'll have to see how it all plays out who gets the first goal in that game is could be is key you know, we'll feel like they, they get in charge and, and I'm sure Madrid will be pretty confident. You know, they come off the cup win against uh, Seville, wasn't it? Late um, on Saturday night, Sunday morning, they talked about they didn't have too much time. One or two players mm -hmm. were, were leggy and, and whatever. So they'll, they'll be a bit more rested in, into Wednesday night. But um, right, yeah. It's going to be tight, Rob, isn't it? It's yeah. Really much, much you, in it, could, it could totally go either way. Yeah. yeah. Could, given the way that they try and do things, if, if City can, can excel in their style, they'll win. If Real Madrid mm. can excel in their style, be strong defensively and hit them on the break, with City maybe a little bit uh, more inclined to, to press and attack a little bit, leave mm. a little bit more space. Real tight. I mean, I, I still would probably just edge for, for Man City. Yeah, you would, um, just based on home form. and I think. might have learned something from just, the first leg. Just slightly, Rob, and, and, and yeah. I'll, I'll just turn this on its head a little bit. Oh. How, how does Man City and Everton in between figure? <laughs> Pep talked about Sunday having that game to, to deal with and then only having like a couple of days after, you know, yeah. maybe Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, you've got to go into one of the biggest games of the season against yeah. one of the best teams in Europe. It, it may play a part. May, yeah. Could we see? Could we see wholesale changes against uh, for Everton? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I think that's partly the, the whole. Well, I don't know. Actually, thinking about it, the subs, like the subs, are they, yeah. are they being kind of. I mean, like you said, they, uh, you didn't want to change too much. You didn't change it. No. It's going to change. I think it was seven changes mm. uh, from from last. Seven, week. including the goalkeeper, or yeah. yeah. came in, so, didn't he? But yeah. So but, I mean, this is why, we, what I, I remember saying it a few times now, this Everton in the middle of these games mm. is a funny game. Yeah. Now, we're going to chat briefly about the Premier League results from Monday. Yeah, just after yeah. yeah. this show. Mm. But one victory is going to have Everton buzzing. It's going to mm. have Edison Park buzzing. Yeah. And if there's one way to beat Man City in this scenario, where they're in between these games, the semi-final mm. of a Champions League, which they, they desperately, desperately need, if they can turn up the heat, if they can, yeah. you know, yeah. That then, then Man City and Arsenal, th this whole dynamic could change a little bit. Um, again, a lot of football to be played. Yeah, there's a, a lot of ifs in there. But you know, ever that just that result is going to buoy them. Yeah, and they'll feel if we can get a few results back to back, we can get out of trouble. Think... Um, but it's a good, good shout, mate. It's a good mm. shout. And this is this is the whole title of the Premier League with Arsenal keeping Man City honest, making them earn every single point. We're going to see it. I mean, yeah. Man City squad's pretty good and they can make changes. The World Cup winner comes in and, and Riyad Mahrez and a few others. So, of course, they're really, really good. But are those guys, is, is um, Alvarez and Riyad Mahrez, yeah. the, are they going to are they going to be okay with the Everton? Yes. If Everton yeah. can turn it up, if they can turn yeah. the diamond yeah. to crazy, you know, crazy, flipping, frantic football. Yeah, what we've seen last season, a bit of that, yeah, a bit yeah. of that stuff, yeah. Yeah, they've got a chance of getting something from mm. that game. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Absolutely. Uh, what also was interesting was the Milan derby played out today. Not quite the, I think, the, the same quality of football that we saw in the Man City-Madrid mm -hmm. game. Um, but Inter Milan get themselves two goals up, two goals in, in first 12 minutes of the game. Jacko and Mkhitaryan, two former uh, Premier League players, getting the goals for Inter. A uh, bit of incident in the game. Second half didn't really live up to expectations. I didn't think AC Milan were quite good enough with... Without Leal on that left-hand side, they certainly miss a bit of threat. Didn't get much service into Giroud. Um, and it was, I always felt it was into a loop more likely to, to get a, a third. Jacko had a, a good shot saved. It would have made it 3-0. That probably would have put it to bed. So I suppose from AC Milan's point of view, still in, still in it, Rob. Next goal is so important in the derby. But um, when you look at the quality of, of Tuesday night and you look at the quality of Wednesday night, very different. Yeah, I, I think so, Rob. And, and listen, I, I got I got tons of respect for Serie A. I just mm. played a lot, did a tough, done a ton of get hundreds of games in that division. Love love the the whole 
uh, the whole vibe around Italian football, Rob, there's something romantic and passionate yeah. about it, which I love about it. I just didn't, I didn't think it was a great game of quality. Now, mm. Inter Milan, of course, started off brilliantly. There was some quality there from, from yeah. Inter. An absolute disaster of a start from AC Milan, Rob. And, and Rafael Leal, you know, he was always going to be a little bit hit or miss whether he made the yeah. game. I think the feeling is that he should be okay for the second Next leg. One, what, a yeah. what, a, what a miss he is yeah. for, for, for Milan. And great start from Inter. I sat there at halftime thinking, Blimenech, AC Milan, nothing. Like yeah. There was nothing from AC Milan. There was nothing. No, no football, very poor defensively. Um, second half was a little different. Understandably, into I felt just dropped a little bit. And thought, yeah. Hang on a minute, it's 2 0. We're like, this mm. is, you know, yeah, we're in control here. And AC Milan had a little bit more pushed, a, li a little bit more in the second half, but not really enough quality, Rob. I didn't think um, to look like a real threat for Inter. No. So. I mean, I just, I enjoyed Latura Martinez. I think yeah. he, you know, he, he's the top man for them in terms of goal scoring. Quality play, he's isn't got, it? Yeah. He's quite, I like a centre forward. I, I just like a centre forward that's got that little bit of, you it was know. Talk, it was wasn't there, one, it, one, one, one or two times that maybe Premier League clubs yeah. were looking to talk at United. I think there was a bit of talk of Arsenal at, at one point. Um, I think it'd be good. I think it'd be yeah, good for Premier League. Yeah, it's a good player. You know, yeah, but, smart I, I player, like watching him play. Player. Watch yeah. him, like watching him. He's, he's capable of the unexpected. That talent, the ability, the skill, etc. So I, I enjoyed that. Lukaku came on. You know, I guess that was a big decision in the game mm, where Lukaku yeah. Lukaku has been starting to score Scored again. Scored at the weekend, yeah. Uh, finally, mm. apparently, he started to find some form, but but wasn't started. Um, yeah, I mean, they could have made it 3-0, the shot that hit the post. I think yeah. a few minutes after the two goals had gone in. So, really great start from Inter. But just like, you're like, mm. wow, what this is... I just, I, I, I guess I expected it to be a lot tighter. Yeah, given the yeah rivalry, a bit more. Given yeah. that San Siro, it's a it spectacular Brilliant atmosphere, wasn't it? Um, what an atmosphere. It's one of the, I remember playing with... Um, Italian, uh, yeah, he's played it into Gianluca Festa, Rob, as a centre-back. Oh, the centre-back, yeah. He's Italian, but from Sardinia, yeah. and he played for Inter. But he he kept stressing, he <laughs> think, the one number one stadium in the world. <laughs> he, he, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I just, I, we had some lovely shots today, Rob, with um, some drone shots of, of just kind of all around the yeah, stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently two place. hours before, wasn't it? Two hours before it, it was on fire, you was know, it? the place going yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's a super, super stadium, 75,000 yeah, 75, or something. 80,000, I think. Is it 80, and it's interesting, yeah. so it's Inter's home game, isn't it? The second one on right. Tuesday. So yeah. Inter have a bit more ticket three allocation. Quarter, three quarters and, of the stadium. Yeah, quarters, so yeah. you think with that and the two goals, Got a fancy into to, 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 to get to. that one done. I mean, it'd be yeah. something drastic. I heard, I heard a lovely line from um, the, there was one of the um, news outlets. It, 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 done, it was interviewing one of he was an Inter fan actually, who was talking about because it's twenty years isn't it since they last met in the, in the Champions League semi, and, and he said the anticipation of victory is only outweighed by the dread of defeat, which is so very Italian. I'm like, I don't think about winning because I know what, what is on the other foot. And I mean, they're halfway, at this stage, they're halfway to it. But um, yeah, still still plenty of football to, to play. Yeah. Still uh, plenty to go for next Tuesday when those two meet um, to play that one out. And then obviously Wednesday, we get uh, Madrid coming to Manchester and seeing how Man City can do. And put that one to bed. So yeah, um, two different Champions League games, but you know, yeah. slightly different quality. But no doubt, uh, the atmosphere in both will be um, as big as they were this first week. And huge things. I mean, you'd have to say, Rob, looking at the football. And listen, finals are different, and games are different. But you, 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 you get the sense that the winner know, of that, the winner, the winner, of, the winner of Madrid and Man City big looks favorite. to be the, the yeah, big, big favorite. Favorite. Wow, big favourite. That that yeah. makes next week I makes mean, a big that, difference, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the uh, Etihad game. Wow, cool. I mean, uh, so we'll see. I mean, we you never know, mate. This game, nah, nah. This game, this game, we, I mean, it, you, it, you do never know. But that that you'd think that given, yeah. you know what what we saw uh, this midweek. Well, we'll look forward to that next week. Um, just to round things off, we've had a, a crazy week of, of, of Premier League football. More down at the at the basement of, of the table, Rob, because. Fulham were, were, were facing Leicester on Monday. There were three games on Monday, Bank Holiday Monday after King's Coronation. Fulham faced Leicester, 5-3 win for Fulham. Um, at one point, I mean, you just couldn't see Leicester defending, goals flying in, Fulham, fl um, Fulham flying, if you, if you forgive the pun. Um, not quite sure what to make of Leicester. Brighton won Everton 5 in the second game that day. So Crazy. Leicester concede 5. Everton score 5. An Everton team that... Built for defence, oh, maybe right, one, yeah. win one nil. Um, Dwight McNeil and Decore flying yeah. forward, brilliant yeah. counter attack play. 
And then we see a, a classic relegation six-pointer where both these teams basically had to win. Nottingham Forest did in the end, winning 4-3. Loads of goals, loads of incidents. VAR get involved in it to um, stop one goal for, for, for Forest getting five. Southampton get back into it 4-3. You're wondering whether they're going to nick a draw out of it. Um is it just crazy time? Is 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 it just is it just madness, madness, madness of May that you know people are, 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 are on their last? This is your last option, really, isn't it? This is your last chance, last chance saloon. Yeah, I, I mean, six games in the Brighton game, seven games in the Forest game, and eight eight goals. Sorry, eight goals in mm. the in the Fulham Leicester. I mean, I think it's a mixture of all sorts, Rob. I mean, Brighton. You know, who sees that coming? You never see it, do you? Also, you get the desperation of teams that need something. And also, Mm. maybe those, maybe those that have got a little bit less to play for. um, But then you could say Fulham. Fulham, yeah. And then they stick five plus less. And that's why, you know, Mm. I don't know. We try and offer our opinions. It's a guess, isn't it? I mean, you look at Southampton now, and and, uh, those who can see on our screen, Southampton 24 points, 20th. Kind of looks like that one's gone. That that ship sailed. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they've behind. got to, Yeah, they've got to win all the, all the games and and hope there. So you know, it, it looks really bad for them. But then we go Leeds thirty points, Leicester thirty points, Everton now thirty two points gives them a, a bit of hope. Nottingham Forest thirty three points, massive win for them to to get them. And then West Ham at thirty seven kind of feels like that's a safety spot as well. So yeah. if those bottom five, Rob. You know, a week ago, I'm thinking, I saw enough in Leicester's draw and, and, and they'll be OK. Right. Based on what I saw the other day, and I've got to be honest, I heard Dean Smith talking a, a little bit and he was, a couple of words he used and expressions he used were, were quite revealing, almost like, he's not totally sure about this dressing room, Rob. He said a couple of things like, that. he said something like, they're not all bad ones in there or something like that, as if like, mm. there's something in there that he doesn't quite like. Do you, do you get the impression that Leicester, that Leicester City, the, the players, don't don't realise what they're in, the situation they're in here? We've, we've said this before, and we did. This is the, the team that sleepwalks into yeah, the, the championship. I, I, I listen to, do you know what I think, Rob? And, and I'll be totally honest and be totally frank. I think it's their, their biggest problem is that most of the players, almost like maybe in some respects, haven't quite got their head around it, but most yeah. of them don't think they'll be playing in the championship. And Didi will go, Madison will go, Tielemans will go, Harvey Bonds will go, yeah. Pat and Daka will go. I don't think it, 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 it really hurts them, Rob. I don't think they think that championship football for me. I think they're thinking, I'm an international player at this level. I'll, I'll, you know, well, it's going to be unfortunate for the club, but I, I'm not going to be What a terrible, I mean, if that's right, what a terrible... <laughs> Way to represent your football club and your fans that have this been unbelievable. I mean, you look at that, that you club. look at that team and you look at the squad and you look at the breakdown, you look at the makeup. They should never be there, Rob. They should never be there. You, you got to listen, there's, there's a lot to say here, but you know, you've got to, for me, point the finger mostly to Brendan Rogers because mm. the things that you're saying there, yeah. and I'm hinting at, you're saying there as well. That should be nipped in the bud like yeah, four, yeah. five, six months ago, yeah, Rob. Yeah, yeah. If as soon as soon as you see where you're on the league, and they listen have been down there all season long, yeah, like, yeah. You know, the, 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 the manager's got to be like, Look, hang on a minute. Like, it's interesting because Jamie Vardy just listened to this today. I listened to a really nice interview of him and um, somebody from the UK was on talk talk radio. Yeah, and he was saying things like, first off, he was saying, which is amazing. He said, if I if if I can help Leicester stay in the Premier League, it'll be my biggest achievement for this club. Wow. And the and the interview was like what what were well, yeah. no, no, you were you won the FA Cup and the yeah. Premier League top? I said, No, no, this will be my biggest achievement. So he 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 it's spoke of, a, of yeah. a love for that club yeah. that's yeah. like it's pretty rare. Mm. Pretty rare how he's desperate he is to try and help yeah. the team. He also said and trying to read between the lines, getting a few things, mm. said we, we gotta learn, we gotta learn that we attack together and we defend together, all eleven yeah. of us. Yeah, you know, yeah. So he hinted that we're not help- Some bodies, yeah. we're not helping yeah, not helping. Yeah. Again, we saw this months ago yeah and 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 and, and i think that the thought was of brennan rogers at the time we're too good we, yeah. we'll get our yeah, passes. play our way out we'll of play it yeah. our way out of it yeah. there aren't many yeah. that do that there isn't yeah. many that play the way out of it and they try to do that for, for for such a long period of time it's a late change in dean smith now and god if things change rob i mean like, we saw a couple of games ago where i'm, I'm lose track of the games but i'm thinking they look good they, they bless the look 
They Look, played against really, Everton. It, played it, it, Everton was it? it was a bottom played, team. Played Everton, didn't they? Didn't they draw 3-3? Three, three? No, it was a different one, I think. I think it was a draw, but they looked so much better. Yeah, than the yeah. Was it yeah. Everton or was it Southampton? Something like that. Yeah, they, they drew 3-3, three, three, yeah. Um, but but things change. And like, like um, so so we're going to jump back on this podcast on Sunday, Rob. I, know, I have no idea what we're going to say. I, don't, I have no yeah. idea who's going to be down at the bottom there because Leicester, it is real now. It's yeah. real now. And, 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 and maybe you're right, which would be a shocking thing, Rob, if, if there are, so what? I, I just don't, I just can't, I can't think the team will think like that. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess that's them. Fulham. I mean, I mean, if, if they, again, we should have a podcast at some point to talk about the teams that we don't get to talk about that. Yeah. Often. The achievements Full, of Fulham is Fulham, pretty amazing. Bournemouth, pretty amazing. Bournemouth should be in that conversation, yeah, mate. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, so that's a, that was a huge result. Yeah. Um, the Everton, Everton result, Rob, in terms of what that does for them. I know they've got Man City coming up. Yeah. I mean, did you see that coming? Like, do, do I mean, Neil get a couple you, of goals? You, you just don't see it coming at all, do you? Decore, we've seen deployed as a little bit more of an attacking edge, potentially. Gets in the box a lot. Yeah, gets in there, you know, Calvert Lewin leads the line while he's involved, make, makes the first goal. And and all the things that, that, that Sean Dyche has talked about and, and preached about coming good. And listen, one result like that, Rob, can, can totally change your you run into the season. Yeah. One result like that. Now, obviously, the, the biggest, worst thing for them, they face City. But it's City with a Madrid on the mind in the second leg of the semi-final. And Goodison, Goodison Port will be absolutely jumping for, for, for Man City. So, give themselves a chance, mate. They've, they've given themselves a, a much better chance than, than, than I thought. I, I, I worry for Leicester. Everything I hear, see I and, and think, I, I worry for Leicester now. Yeah, I worry for him as well. I, I, I tell you what, Rob, moving on to, to a team that over the course of this season, I, I've my respect for the manager and for the team. And, yeah. and, I don't know, the club. I, I, I've always had respect for the club. Not in Forest mm. beating Southampton 4-3. Uh, I know that you've always been a big fan of Steve. Yeah, Cooper, Steve Robin Cooper. Yeah, yeah, I just think that the last couple of months, well, more than that, he, he's he's done what I felt he needed to do. Rob is settling yeah. on a, on a pretty much a, a standard team. Like this is kind mm. of us now. Yeah, we've had yeah. that look. Everybody, we're in a bit of trouble. We need to find a team that I want to go with. The majority of the time, he's done that, and I I I enjoyed the post game scenes at the yeah. City Ground. When I saw a lot of emotion, I saw a spirit from the team. I saw mm. the manager almost overwhelmed with flipping celebration. I just think they they've they've found a little bit of something quite late, mm. and the results haven't been good. And I know yeah. they, they find it really difficult to win games, and this is a, a winnable game against you know the worst team in the division this season. Yeah, but I just I just I've got a, a lot of respect and admiration for the way that Steve Cooper's done it, Rob. Of, of a whole new team coming in. Mm. It's difficult. It's difficult. Well, and I tell you, he might, he might just do it. Just, just to 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 back your point up. He's he do, he's done what Brendan Rodgers failed to do. When when there was a problem, he he found his team. He's worked a system. He's worked on his players. They've got a decent set organization, good structure, and he's winning. He's turned it yeah. around and, and won some games with a bit of spirit. Brendan Rodgers just kept talking about how good of players they were and the possession they'll have and how we'll create chances and we're good on the ball and this and this and this and this. And it, there was no realisation of, of actually, I need to get my hands dirty and, 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 and fix this problem. And that's what Steve Cooper's done and he's got a great reputation and I'll say it goes back from his as a kid in Liverpool's academy as a coach, went to Swansea, um, to Swansea as a coach, went into Forest, the job he's done there and, and to see him Given the chance to finish the season, hopefully from Forrest's point of view, it looks like good chance now of possibly getting one more win away from, from staying in the league will be a magnificent um, achievement for a guy who didn't, I think it was 11 games, Rob, they didn't win a game. They, they were the one I thought was going to get detached very early and then it's going to be two others. Um, and they've hung in there. They've got results when they've needed to, found a way to win games. And, um, yeah, give themselves every chance. So, I mean, as to who's going down, Rob, I I'll, I'll stick my neck out and say Southampton will go down. <laughs> but, <laughs> apart from that, I haven't... Honestly, it, it, it's foolhardy, isn't it? I mean, it, it changes week by week. You know what, Rob? I'm just, I'm just sort of thinking here, like, you know, just, just on, on what we're seeing from Forest. I mean, yeah. it's basically a grind, right? Yeah. Mm. And, you know... We're seeing not in a forest grind. We're seeing West Ham United yeah, grind. grind. Yeah, going to be okay. Yeah, we're seeing now 
Leeds United yeah. with a grinding manager Possible, trying to grind. Yeah. Yeah. Teams that haven't um, <laughs> teams that haven't really embraced the grinding. Mm. Leicester City, Leeds United, that will now. Yeah, and South Southampton. Southampton. Yeah. And Southampton. Yeah, and and listen, fair play to Wolf, Wolves. Like Wolves, yeah. I don't I don't feel that they're a grinding team. But they're, no, they're well organised. It's, it's really it's got, not yeah. easy once yeah. you're down there with over half of the season gone. I feel like you, you, you're probably better going to have to find some grinding action yeah. going on and, and, yeah. and tighten up defensively because that historically we've seen it again this year. Rob, yeah, we'll, we'll, that, that yeah. it kind of is the way hmm. to grind. Out victories and points and points and draws and a win and a loss and 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 th those who have embraced it have still got a chance. I mean, Leeds still have a chance, but it's going to go back to the grinding way. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, I, I sense Leeds at home to Spurs last day of the season might need a grind, and if they they're in it and Sam can can grind yeah, one out there, mate. Will, will, yeah, will, yeah. Yeah. With that with that fan base there, but. Listen, mate, lots to look forward to yeah. in the next two, two or three weeks. But uh, a good midweek of Champions League semi-finals. Two goals in both the games. Madrid and Man City, they shared the spoils in their one. In the Milan derby, it was in two. Got two early goals and puts them in control. And it's all to play for next week. Games Tuesday and Wednesday, don't miss them. But before that, we'll be back on Sunday. That's May the 14th, which is Mother's Day here in the US, for those who need reminding. Uh, we'll look back on games on Saturday when Leeds, who we just talked about, hosts Newcastle with implications both ends of the table there. And then Sunday, Manchester City go to Everton between these two big Real Madrid games. And Arsenal, they'll look to beat Brighton to keep the pressure on City at the top of the table. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty. Together with the two Robbies, thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good, good night. night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.